right. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in here. Today we've got uh, Ryan Schweitzer on the channel here. He's uh, going to be introducing himself, letting everybody know uh, what his platform is, and uh, he's running for our town council in uh, the city of Swift Current here. So start off the exact same way. Start off with everybody else. And tell me a little bit about yourself, your family, your interests, that kind of thing. Right on. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show, Tony. Uh, I, stuff like this is great. Uh, my my work history, I actually spent 20 years as a broadcaster. So I've been on, on your side of the microphone a lot. This is one of my first times actually being interviewed. So I was really nervous heading into this. But uh, for for 20 years, I worked uh, mostly in radio with a little bit of TV and uh, and print thrown in there as well. And uh, in 2014, I kind of left the mainstream media and started my own social media marketing home-based business, which, uh, which ended up doing a lot of video production. So uh, my life's work has been, uh, has been a lot of media. Uh, currently, I'm, the, uh, I I'm married to Christina, and she, uh, she's an associate at RBC Dominion Securities and Swift Current, working with Kevin Patnode and the crew there. And uh, she's the stepmother to two amazing kids uh, from my first marriage. Uh, my son, Ethan, is 20, and my daughter, Eliza, is 18. So uh, Eliza's actually just getting ready to, to head to Vancouver to uh, pursue a career in acting there. She's going to be going to Vancouver Film School. And my son, Ethan, works with me with uh, my home-based business, Snow Streaker Media. He runs camera for me on various projects. Cool. Yeah, a friend of mine just moved to Vancouver for her husband studying there too. So that's cool. I, I, I don't know if their family is as terrified as I am about that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's dropping the baby bird out of the nest big time. But uh, my daughter's got a good head on her shoulders and she'll be fine. I, I just yeah, if she's anything like you, she'll, she'll soar. <laughs> so you just announced that you're running for town council. Uh, what? prompted you to get into town council? Well, I've, it's a decision that I've been thinking about making, you know, for maybe the last 15, 20 years or so. And just, you know, for, for whatever reason, whenever election season rolls around, uh, it, it's, it hasn't been just quite right. You know, um, I was, I was this close to running in 2016. Um, we were a few months out from the election like we are now, but I, I took a look at, at who all was running and who I figured would get in. And I thought, you know, th this is a council that can represent me. Um, I don't know how much I could add to this. I, it was a very, very good and, and diverse group of people. Um, but this time around, what, what really motivated, what motivated me to do it was uh, when Councillor George Bowditch announced that, that he wasn't going to be seeking re-election. And uh, I, I think I stand for a lot of the things that George did were, were of a similar mindset. And uh, I thought, that's, that's a gig that I can fill. So that was the, the big thing that kind of kicked me into going and picking up the council package from City Hall. Yeah, for those who don't know, George Bowditch was in our town council for a, a number of years. I, I can definitely remember voting for him several times. So yeah, he was definitely a mainstay there. Sorry to see him go, but uh, happy to see you running. Uh, and I, yeah, and uh, you know, he did a lot of great things. And uh, you know, he was a media guy beforehand as well. He wrote a great column for the Prairie Post. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of the people that, uh, that supported George over the years can, uh, can keep an open mind when it comes to supporting me. And uh, this is your first shot at uh, political position, is it not? It is, yeah. Uh, you know, unless you count a, a failed attempt at student representative council when I was in grade seven at Irwin School. Um, I, I, my, my speechwriter really failed me in that campaign, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know what? Years later, I'm, I'm ready to get back on the horse and, uh, and give it a shot. I wasn't going to run for mine back when I was in uh, elementary school there. Uh, I think it was grade six or grade seven, but then I was nominated and I'm just like, oh crap. Like, <laughs> and then I was told, go to the hall, we'll be all about, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I lost to someone in their campaign speech. Uh, they, they had a campaign promise of installing beer in the water fountains at Irwin School or, or something like that. And, and they never made good on that promise either. I don't remember what mine was, but I was so good with speeches of just BSing. So it was probably just a whole bunch of BS I threw together. <laughs> uh, so uh, what do you think would make you the best candidate going forward? Oh, gosh, uh, the, the best candidate. Uh, you, you know, Tony, I, I hope that, that all of my opponents do interview you. And I, I think what probably most of them would say would be hard work. And, uh, you know, I feel that I'm no exception there. Um, but in terms of, of what makes me an attractive candidate is, uh, you know, through all my years working in the media, 
you know, there's days where I'm working with CEOs and CAOs and people responsible for giant organizations. But, but then the next day I'm, I'm working in the vulnerable sector and, you know, really seeing things from an entirely different perspective. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that there's a lot of other candidates out there that, that have that same life experience that I do, that diverse experience of day in and day out, you know, really seeing a, a different element of our city. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've worked with some of Southwest Saskatchewan's most successful people. And, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with people who are on tough times too. And myself, I, I think I'm representative of that. Uh, you know, COVID-19 has been tough on me. I'm, I'm a sports videographer without too many sports to shoot these days, but, uh, you know, I'm getting by and, you know, in, in prosperous times, my, my home-based business was, was very, very well. And we did a great job with it, but, you know, there was also a time in my life where, uh, I was making myself mustard sandwiches to eat because that's literally all I had was, was bread and mustard. So I, I come from a very diverse work and, and personal background and uh, I think I've seen our community from more angles than most have. Yeah, that's well. I know 2019 was a really rough year for us too, as you know. And 2020 has been trying to, we've been trying to bounce back. <laughs> of course, COVID's making that tough for everybody. But, um, you know, yeah, it definitely life experience is, is one, of the, one of the key components to success for sure. Yep. We, we keep on keeping on, man. Exactly. Uh, what do you provide for Swift Current residents? Uh, you know, there's, uh, a lot of candidates are running on, uh, transparency and, uh, you know, I, I was an early adopter with social media, um, snow streaker media, my home based business was, uh, was one of the first companies out there to specialize in social media marketing, um, with, with Ryan Schweitzer on council, uh, people are going to know what's going on in, uh, in Swift Current. Uh, they might get updates that they might not even ask for or want, but, you know, I, I really want to get in there and, and let people know what's going on around Swift Current. Um, so in terms of, of what I provide, uh, I, I feel that my communication skills are very strong with the, the social media experience with my home-based business and the mainstream media experience of my, uh, my 20 year career prior to that. Uh, what are some key issues you would like to see addressed in this upcoming term? Well, in the upcoming term in the next four years, I'd, I'd really like to see something happen with that integrated facility. Um, I, I want people to, who have never been to Swift Current or, or maybe people that have to come to Swift Current and to stay in Swift Current. I want to see our community grow. Uh, and in doing that, we need to make our community attractive for families. And I think we've done a great job of that, but there's certain things that have to go to the next level. Uh, a lot of our facilities, the aquatic center and the rec center, uh, those are facilities that have been around for a long time that are nearing the end of their lifespan. And, and those facilities don't owe us a thing. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to see our community grow. I'd like to see people choose to, to stay here. And, uh, you know, I, I just... I, I loved raising a family in Swift Current. I absolutely loved it. This was such a great community for me and my kids. They had so many different opportunities with, with great people and great coaches and extracurricular activities. And I know you yourself have a young family, Tony. And, uh, you know, I want, I want folks like you to love raising a family in Swift Current as much as I did. Yeah, I know Swift Current's been a great place. My wife and I both had opportunities to uh, leave. We've had job offers even the last year here. And we've just... We like Swift Current. We want to stay, and uh, that's that's one thing. Is I I would definitely like to see it see it grow, and uh, I'm excited to to see the way it's growing. I uh, I, I left Swift Current actually in uh, in 2000. I, I worked in Brandon, Manitoba for uh, for 21 months, and and then came back here, and uh, I've loved it ever since. And uh, I, I always tell people uh, I, I'm a Swifty lifer. I'm not going anywhere. I love it here. Yeah, I can say the same thing. Um, so what does your platform look like as we ramp up for the, for the election? Yep. Come here, stay here, love it here. Um, I want to see Swift Current grow. Um, at the same time, I, I do love this community, uh, and I always have. And uh, we need to remember the people that, that built this great community that we have. So, you know, we certainly have to uh, respect the past and, and do what we can for our seniors. But first and foremost for me is, you know, the, the continued community growth. Uh, you know, throughout the, the 80s and 90s, Swift Current didn't grow that much. 
uh, there wasn't a lot that happened, uh, you know, when I was growing up here. And, you know, from, from the early 2000s to where we are now, it's just been, it's been amazing to see, you know, the, the changes that have happened within our city, to see new businesses come here, to see us become a much more diverse community in, in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all about continuing that, uh, that upward growth within our community. You know, we were, we were around 15, 16,000 people for, for decades. How and it's nice that? to see those numbers finally trending upward. And, and gosh, I sure hope that continues. Yeah, for sure. So I know we kind of touched on the integrated facility a little bit. Um, what other kinds of project, projects can we expect to see you push for uh, if you're elected? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, I touched on it earlier that I've been thinking about running for, for city council for a number of years. And, and in doing so, I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to talk to many people who have served and who currently served. And uh, one thing that they all say is my first term on council was nothing like I expected it to be. So I'd, I'd love to sit here and I'd love to say with Ryan Schweitzer on council, we're going to build that integrated facility and we're going to get all these sexy new things and we're going to have all these amazing businesses come to town. And, and that's great. And I'm going to work for all that. But, you know, realistically, the role of the city council is to, to make sure that when people turn on their tap that you have good water pressure and to make sure that, uh, you know, those infrastructure needs are, are looked after and, you know, to, to keep the, the ice in the rinks and, and whatnot. So um, there, there's lots of potentially huge projects on the horizon that I'd love to be a part of, but uh, at the same time, you know, a lot of it is, uh, a lot of city council is the less glamorous work. And, uh, you know, I, I expect to, to be a very informed counselor with what's going on there and, and keep the public informed with what's happening. Yeah, they do all the all the hard work, and the mayor gets to sit there in his cushy chair. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Rocking that chain of office of his. Yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, no, he. You know, Dennis has been an extremely hardworking mayor over the last few years, and uh, and you know his his work ethic has been inspiring to me. Um, he he's earned that mayor salary over the last four years, and uh, you know I I look forward to to contributing the the same number of hours, if not more, than than what he's done. Yeah, he's always he's always uh, pushing on that uh, growth thing, and I know if that's one of the things you're you're pushing for too, then that's definitely you'll get along well. <laughs> Hashtag grow Swift, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> so recently, Swift Current found out that the funding for that multi-purpose facility was was declined and cut, and I know this is more of a mayoral issue than it is a city council issue. Um, but what kinds of uh, things would you do to maybe help get that? facility pushed or get the funding together for that? Because I know, like you touched on before, the aquatic facility and that library are at the end of their lifespan. They're, they're in desperate need of repair and updating. Uh, so we definitely need, need to see something going through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like the, uh, you know, the regional approach that, uh, that our current council has talked about taking, you know, not just siloing us here in, in good old sense making swift current, but, but reaching out to, to different RMs and different municipalities and, and building different relationships with different councils. And, uh, you know, that may be what it takes to get this integrated facility built. Um, if we want families to come to swift current, we, we need those families to have activities. And, and we got we to gotta keep our children busy and fun and participating in different sports and leisure activities and whatnot. And uh, that integrated facility would be huge for our community. And, you know, if, if that means opening up and, and working on strengthening relationships with, with different RMs and, and different town councils, then, uh, then I'm all about that. You know, we, we got to find with that integrated facility, I think it's a key part in our future. And, and we got to find a way or make one. To, to get that thing built. Yeah, well, there's a will, there's a way. Definitely. Um, so Swift Current, I know lately we've been spending a lot of money in, in the recent years on various projects, which of course, a lot of that's gone towards helping to, to get Swift Current, make it more attractive and, and grow Swift Current. Um, like you say, hashtag grow Swift Current. Um, what is your view on these projects and what could we um, expect in terms of spending and making sure the money is there for these projects if you're on council. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I've, I've closely followed the, uh, the city budget over the past few years. And, uh, you know, it, it hasn't been a very glamorous budget over the past, uh, you know, three or four years. It's been a lot of infrastructure type things, which, which you have to do. 
you have to look after that. The, uh, the innovation credit union IPLEX floor needing replacement, you know, that, that floor was in rough shape and the Swift Current Broncos are a big drawing card in, in Swift Current and Southwest Saskatchewan. We need to have a, a top of the line home for them. So, so that was a couple million dollars that, that had to be spent. And uh, I certainly wouldn't have done anything different if I was on council then. It's something that I would have voted in favor of. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of projects, uh, that, that integrated facility is, is going to be the big one. Um, I'm a big outdoors guy as well. I, there's few things that I enjoyed more as a parent than taking my kids to parks. Uh, I'd love to find ways to, uh, to improve on some of our parks, uh, more play structures and whatnot, and, and keep this community attractive for, for young families. You know, those are things that, uh, that I'll be enthusiastically supporting. I know I myself would like to see where that uh, old St. Joe's school was. I'd like to see that uh, project go through that uh, they had done up all the drawings and everything, the blueprints for. I'd like to see that go through for sure. As a South Sider myself, absolutely. Yeah, that yes. would be. Uh, <laughs> see, and and I'm, I'm sure there's there's lots of different routes that that, that could take. Uh, be, being on the South Side, you, you'd love to see a little bit more business come here as well. So, uh, so we'll see. But uh, you know, the the community growth and uh, the the continued upward trending of the graph with with populations of young families that's that, that's what I'm all about. Yeah, and to me, that multi-purpose facility comes first. <laughs> that to me is more needed. Um, so I know everyone is kind of tired of hearing about COVID nineteen. Um, how do you feel that that has been handled? so far well so far um and I, I think our provincial government has done the best they can with what they have uh anything health related you know the the city needs to take direction from the provincial government so that's that's an issue that's why we pay mr hindley the big bucks but uh but having said that you know when it comes to to the handling of covid um you know every every human or, or people have two ears and one mouth. And I think that that ratio should be respected. And, uh, you know, I, I follow the lead of the people that voted for me on, on how to handle COVID. You know, I can be a very vocal voice to our provincial government. Um, how have things been handled thus far? We, we've kept our case numbers down. We've kept people healthy in a global pandemic. Um, some of the restrictions have certainly felt a bit harsh at times and have certainly hurt business. But at the same time, you know, the, the people in those key decision-making positions have done a great job of keeping our, our residents here in the 306 safe. So I know hindsight is 2020, so it's easy to be critical of anything when you're looking back. Do you think there's anything that maybe could have been handled better that um, as a council, maybe we could have addressed a little bit better? Uh, as city council, uh, you know, I'll, right, right away, I'll say maybe a, a bit better job of just communicating. But, but having said that, I really respect um, Mayor Perot encouraging people to still go and support small business, even with COVID happening. Um, so, so, yeah, you know, hindsight being 2020, uh, I won't be overly critical. We, we've all been frustrated because of COVID. Um, it sucks. And I can't wait for it to, to be over, whatever that means and what that looks like. But, uh, you know, by and large, I think all involved have done the best they could with what they had. And I know it's definitely when this is all over, we'll be able to look back and be like, oh, we should have done this, this and this. And it's always easy to, to do that. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a novel virus. So, I mean, it's been a new thing for all of us. Um, so as a councilman, how would you help address the, some of these COVID decisions going forward, um, things you maybe would, would be proposing or would be trying to support Perot in, or whoever the next mayor is mm -hmm. in terms of doing that? Well, first and foremost, uh, we need to look after our most vulnerable. Um, that to me is priority one, people who are immunocompromised. Uh, you look at the statistics on COVID, the hard data, and uh, it does affect people um, elderly people, senior citizens. So first and foremost, we need to protect them. And, and I think we need to listen to them as well, because, you know, there's, there's folks in their 60s and 70s who I've talked to that are just like, who, who will just say, you know, I, I don't want these restrictions. I want to live. I want to hug my grandchildren. I want my family. So I think we need to, uh, there's a time as a leader to talk, and there's a time to listen. And in regards to COVID-related things, 
it would behoove us as a council to listen to what the residents of Swift Current think and do our best to uh, communicate that to our MLA. So I know this is probably a little bit above what, what count, town council does, but in terms of a mask mandate, if that was proposed for Swift Current as an option, would you support a mask mandate? Why or why not? Uh, I would support it because, again, it's, it's keeping our vulnerable safe. And uh, I don't like wearing a mask. Nobody likes wearing them. But, uh, you know, we're in an unprecedented time. And if me wearing a mask when I go buy my groceries at the co-op is going to save a life, that's, that's not a big ask. Um, I, I just hope that going forward, the people in decision-making positions at all three levels of government are just able to, to take a nonpartisan approach to the data and make the best decisions based on that. Good answer. Yeah, I know a lot of right now there's not a lot of scientific data to back it. So I know a lot of times right now people are kind of on the fence or, or questioning it. And yeah, to me, for myself, I would need to see a lot more evidence than whatever that well, evidence is. And that's what we go and, with, right? Like, and as a leader, you know, there's, there's a time to show strength and to dig in and, and to pit in on your ideals. But, you know, the, this COVID situation, I mean, it's, it's changed so many times over the last few months, you know, so, and I think you have some people in decision making positions who are entrenched in those opinions and afraid to backtrack. And, you know, the, the data has changed. Um, it's, it's something that I was very scared of getting. It's something that I was very scared of my family getting, but looking at the data, nobody in our, in our house is immunocompromised. So we're, we're able to, to head out of the house with a little bit more confidence now, but at the same time, you know, we absolutely have to go through the safety measures for taking care of, of those who are compromised and, and those who are elderly. So are there any final talking points that you'd like to discuss or things you maybe want to uh, bring up for your, for the last pitch for your campaign? Uh, you know what? Uh, I want to thank you very much for having me on the show here, Tony. Uh, I think stuff like this is, is fantastic. I, I certainly look forward to, uh, to fielding questions from, from the mainstream media, you know, from the Booster and, and from Swift Current Online and, uh, and from the Prairie Post. But, you know, I, I love engaged citizens doing this and just reaching out to the candidates and asking questions and asking for a sit down. And, uh, you know, I very much look forward to doing more of this. And, uh, and I thank you very much. For, for inviting me on here. Well, thanks for coming. It's been a pleasure.